APA style for academic papers, based on the 6th edition, original by Katherine P. Fulford, Professor, University of Hawaii, updated by Kelly Kong. What is APA style? APA is the American Psychological Association. These are conventions to provide consistency and standardization in published works. Many conventions are designed for ease of publication by publishing houses. When self-publishing, these conventions convert to what the final published work would look like. Many journals, conferences, and doctoral programs have their own publishing guidelines. Those should take priority. APA style formatting follows some rules. Set the left margin for binding at 1.5 inches on student papers. All others are 1 inch. Use 12-point serif font, like Times Roman, with no hyphenation and an uneven right margin. Use only double spaces, in other words, no single space in tables or tables of contents, no triple or double-double space between title and text, and no extra space between sections or before tables or figures. Remember, though, to check the guidelines if you're writing a dissertation or a conference paper or journal article. Line up numbers in a list on a decimal point or a period. See how sloppy this looks? You want to avoid that. This is much nicer. Look at how this table of contents lines up nicely on the left. If you use a decimal tab, you don't actually have to use the decimal, but it lines them up straight. You can also use a right tab after the dots in a table of contents. Use and indent subheadings in the table of contents. The abstract is a 100 to 250 word summary of the paper that includes results. It's usually only one paragraph. You may borrow language from the body of the text, so I usually do this last. Don't indent at the beginning of the paragraph. The abstract in a long paper goes before the table of contents. Don't include an abstract or front pages in the table of contents. Appendices are in the table of contents with subtitles and page numbers for each. Include a list of tables and a list of figures on two separate pages after the table of contents. If there is only one, just say table or figure rather than list of tables or list of figures. Use a running head and page numbers on each page. Shorten the title of your paper. It should be a maximum of 50 characters. Don't use your name or the chapter title. Place the running head a half an inch below the top of the page. On the first page only, use running head, colon, and then the title of your running head. Place the short title flush left and in all uppercase. Justify the page number on the right margin and start numbering at the title page. Headings. Double space only between headings. You should not use larger text for formal papers for your headings, but do follow the criteria given to you by whoever you're submitting the article to. Select the appropriate number of headings, 3 to 5 for long papers with chapters, and 1 to 3 for short papers. This is what it looks like with five levels. Your first heading is centered, bold, and upper and lower case. Heading 2 is flush left, bold, with upper and lower case. Heading 3 is indented lower case with a period. Heading 4 is indented bold, lower, with a period and 5 is indented, italics, and lower with a period. If you're using four levels, this is somewhat modified. Your first heading is similar. It's centered, bold, and upper and lower. Heading 2, flush left, bold, upper, lower. And heading 3, indented, lowercase with a period. Heading 4, and indented, bold, italics, and lowercase with a period. And for two or three levels, it's modified this way. Your first heading is the same, centered, bold, upper and lower. Second, flush left, bold, upper and lower. Heading three, indented, lowercase, with a period. APA style, citations and references. With the Digital Reference Manager, citations and references are much easier than they used to be. Zotero, EndNotes, and Mendeley are popular, but do not rely on them exclusively. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. Make sure to check your references thoroughly. Make sure all of the components are there for the proper reference and citation. Get to know the basics. APA style, citations and references. There are two citation formats. For example, 
According to Fulford, Peck, and Lynn, 2015, there are a lot of resources to learn APA style. Notice that in a full sentence style, we use the word and, and the date is in parentheses. When there's no name used in the citation, it's at the end of the sentence, and we use an ampersand, and a period is after the parentheses. When citing more than one reference, order it alphabetically and separate with semicolon, like this. For citations with three to five authors, use all authors the first time, and after that, use et al. With six or more authors, always use et al. For example, Fulford, comma, et al., period, comma, 2015, close parentheses. Notice there's only a period after al. All citations in your paper should be referenced, and all references should be cited. Place references in alphabetical order. You want to make sure all of the citations are there. One way to make sure all the citations are there is to print out your reference list and then search for a parenthesis. And as you find each one that is a citation, you can check it off your reference list. Check the APA manual for each style. You want to use hanging indents of a half an inch for your references. What do I mean by this? This is a hanging indent. In other words, the second and following lines are indented here. In the reference, you use the last name with the person's initials. A comma goes after each one. There's an ampersand between the list and the last person. For the subtitle, use a sentence format. For the title, use title case in italics. Title case means that all of the major words are uppercase. You use periods after each major section, and there's no space between either the issue number and the page numbers. DOI reference examples. This is new in the 6th edition. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. If an electronic or print document includes the DOI, it should be cited in your references. Located on the first page or electronic journal articles near the copyright information or in the database citation. Here's the general format. All DOIs start with the number 10. The prefix is four or more numbers and denotes the organization. The suffix is assigned by the publisher. Here's an example. Non-DOI references would look like this. You only need to include the URL of the journal homepage. Notice in the 6th edition the retrieval date is no longer needed. Here are some more reference examples for a podcast, for a blog post, and for photographs. Tables, figures, and appendices. Tables are text or numbers written in columns. Do not use a table for enumerated text or lists. Figures are graphs, charts, and pictures. You should number them sequentially. 1, 2, 3, 4 for tables and figures. A, B, C, D for appendices. Avoid numbers with decimals, like this. Number tables separately from figures. Do not number a single item. Just call it the figure or the table or the appendix. Capitalize the first letter when you use a number after it, such as Table 1, Figure 3, Objective 6, Day 2, Student 8, except for these chapters, page, rows, and columns. Describe and refer to every figure, table, appendix included in the body of the text or the appendix. If the table is two pages long, just use Table 1, Continued, rather than Table 2. Do the same with figures. Avoid light colors, especially for text and lines and graphs. Place figures, tables, and appendices in the order that they're referenced. Place figures and tables soon after they're referred to within the text. Don't use page numbers. If it's self-published, place within the text. If it's externally published, at the end with a notation in the text. This allows the publisher to place them in the place that works for the journal. Make reference to these within or after the discussion, not before and not altogether. Say what to look for. If the reference is within a sentence, just use figure 1 with a period. If the reference is a complete sentence, use a period and then parentheses, see figure 1, period, parentheses. Tables. Your title goes above the table. Be sure to left justify it. Note, the title is in italics, but not the table, label, and number. Use title case with no periods. Remember, title case has capital letters for every important word. Double space here. Use horizontal lines only. 
and serif font to match the text. Don't use vertical lines. Figures. It's okay in figures to use both horizontal and vertical lines. It's okay to use pictures and geometric shapes. In other words, you have a figure when you have geometric shapes and pictures. In this case, the title goes below the figure. Notice it's only one line. You want to left justify this title and use a sans serif font both for the title as well as any text that's in the figure. Sans serif would be something like Arial or Helvetica. The word figure and the number are in italics and there's a period after the number. Use sentence structure with a period and no italics for the title of the figure. Use sans serif font in the figure unless you are using an existing chart that you have permission for. Legends are part of the figure and should be the same font and size. Landscaped pages. Put the short title and page number at the top of the page as usual. Always put the top of the figure on the left side even if your layout is two-sided. Import graphics into word processing for best results and placement. Place your figure or table title in relation to the figure. Language. Use formal language, no colloquialisms. If you choose to use third person, which is now optional, avoid I, we, and our, and be consistent in its use. Refer to people as who and things as that. Avoid contractions. Spell out will not rather than use want. Avoid the fact that it's wordy and it's often not true. Avoid the word proven. Instead, use support. Use past tense when reporting results. With frequencies or percentages, use frequencies in groups of less than 10. Use percentages with larger groups. You can combine percentages and frequencies by putting the percent first and the frequency in parentheses. Avoid statistical terms unless there is a statistical test. For example, correlated or significant or other statistical terms. Always properly cite other people's works and ideas. When quoting, always provide a citation and provide a page number. Avoid the excessive use of quoted materials. Parallel structure. In list especially, you should use words that are grammatically parallel. In other words, using the same verb type. For example, Use, list, describe, and paint are a different verb type from using, listing, describing, painting, or reading, and uses, list, describes, paints, and reads. So pick one group and stick with it. To be conceptually parallel, use the same classification level. For example, functions versus task versus subtask, or, like in an outline, Roman numeral level versus ABC level versus small Roman numeral level. Slashes, parentheses, and numbers. Avoid the use of slashes and parentheses and ampersands. Avoid in the body of the text, but it's okay in citations. Here's some examples. And, or, good, bad, dog, dogs. We love dogs, also cats, dogs and cats. You have to be careful because parentheses and slashes can cause people to be confused or have to read several times to get the meaning. So you want to avoid parenthetical statements altogether. They're a little bit like thought clouds. Spell out numbers below 10. Accept precise measurements, time, dates, ages, and size. Or, to denote a specific page, table, or figure. Avoid mixing numerals and words, though. So instead of saying 1 spelled out, 5 spelled out, and 15 not spelled out, just go ahead and use numerals for the entire thing. Acronyms and abbreviations. Ooh, there are a lot of them. Avoid the overuse of these. They're not needed for every variable or organization. If they're widely accepted, like DOE or TV, you can use them. The problem is, something like DOE can be both Department of Education or Department of Energy. Use it if it's frequently in the paper. But make sure you use your acronyms correctly. Define, that is, spell it out the first time with an acronym in parentheses. For example, television, in parentheses, TV. If you use acronyms in the abstract, you also must define it in the paper. But abstracts don't usually have acronyms, again, unless they're mentioned a number of times. Don't use Latin abbreviations in the text, such as etc., i.e., e.g., versus, and et al., but it's okay to use these in citations as needed. Analysis versus explanation. You're expected to do more than explain. You're expected to analyze. 
explanation is what happened, whereas analysis requires a thoughtful reflection of what happened in relation to the data. Why did you think it happened through consideration of the circumstances? And how could the situation be changed to improve the results? Be careful, though, not to bias your study. Always try to provide contrary evidence. In other words, show both the pros and cons. Here is an example of an explanation, and here is an example of an analysis. First of all, the analysis is slightly longer, about twice as long. Notice here, the explanation only says whose job it is to oversee the computer lab. On the other hand, here, they talk about the backgrounds of the staff and the close interaction between members of different groups and provide an example. Here's another one. This is an explanation of data. So it provides the scores, and then it generically says that it needs revision. Whereas this analysis, again, a lot longer, says why they made the scores that they did and what the author thinks may have happened. For more information on APA style, buy the book. It really is a great resource. There is an official APA website, apastyle.org. Check out this blog also at apastyle.org. Search the web using the term APA style. That's all, folks.